Well, my real name is Rich Theobald, but my artist name is Donald Topp. So when I took some printing classes in college, it, it just stuck with me. Um, it would be silk screening or block printing, or any type of printing, for some reason it just, uh, I was good at it and I liked it. And I liked the, the idea of producing original piece of work for everybody, but printing at the same time. Um, we're on that digitally doing reproductions, like a lot of time, that's how a lot of people make their money, is the digital reproductions of their work. But I can give you an original piece, even though it's a print, uh, and for the same amount of money and same amount of time. You know, you're studying art, you're studying art history, and you're looking what other people are doing, and you notice when people look, but they don't really look at the art. They don't stop to analyze um, what the artist is trying to say, if they are trying to say something, um, they go, oh, that's a nice picture of trees. Okay, and they move on. You know, but like, you know, how do they use the brush strokes, you know, with the layering of colors and what mood are they trying to create? And I've always liked the idea of taking things and changing the context of them by putting them in the different um, surroundings. It would be a lame way of saying it. Therefore, changing the meaning and a lot of times I put things in the background to see if you actually are looking at it. Uh, so I use a lot of iconic images that people recognize right off the bat. And oh, that's a picture of Wonder Woman. But then I put things in the background that might change what the context of the story is about. Um, especially with, uh, like I was doing a couple of series with the Muppets. Everybody loves the Muppets. I'm playing off your nostalgia, right? But with Beaker, if you actually analyze the character of Beaker, is a disaster of science, right? Science gone bad. And so I would put stuff in the background, how science is not gonna save us in the end. Uh, it's just, you know, science gone bad, you know, the way we treat our environment, and therefore we're changing the conversation of, oh, Beaker, I love that character, but well, what's really going on here? And so I'm playing off your nostalgia to bring you in and then hopefully uh, you'd stick around long enough to read what's in the background. Therefore, I'm changing the context. So that print of Charlie Brown with a tattoo, so I was looking at the character and the essence of Charlie Brown is he's a kid who got bullied, really. Um, put upon kid. So with the day and age of a uh, cyber bully and you know, just being a-holes to each other online, what's the idea of Charlie Brown growing up? Uh, probably get tattoos, you probably start smoking, you know. And then the background text is all about bullying, you know, the ramifications of it, you know, how, you know, it affects basically children. It doesn't really go away once you've been bullied. Or if you did, were the bullier, you know, it's just, it's a commentary of things you see and the characters themselves are just a metaphor of what I want to talk about. So I, so I take these old characters created back in the 40s and 50s and I just updated them. But the tattoos themselves also are, serve as a commentary too. They have a message, they tell a story. They're not just tattoos for the sake of tattoos. Because I thought I was gonna be a comic book artist when I was growing up. And so you know that's where I gravitated to. And I just like the idea of taking the images, much like Roy Lichtenstein and the pop arts from the 1960s and Andy Warhol, and then take them on context presenting them in a different way, and then hopefully have something to say. Um, I've always gravitated to art that has something to say. Street art, graffiti art, um, you know, sticker art. I really like graffiti and street art because it's a timely way to do art. It can hit a message right on the bat, right on the, on the button, and people can relate to it, and it has a message. So this is what's gonna be a four color screen, or a print. Uh, what I do is, the paper itself, I'll paint that with a roller of uh, house paint, and then I'll start layering my screens. So this will be the first screen I print is this one, is the city scene. And then the next color would be the text. And then what I do is I do a white body over that. So basically a base, we call that a base. And then the final layer, which would be my black layer, would be the tattoo Charlie Brown. So I put it over there. So that's what's going on in screens I have to have four, and that's the process of the layering. 
So what I'll do is I'll cut my paper and my board and then I just paint it by using a roller. And usually I have a staple of like six or seven screens I just randomly rotate for background. A lot of it is just to break up color, create texture, and uh, uh, create the overall feel, the colors I want to use. So this is my first layer and I'm going to be using this, these two images right here in the background. So, all right, so I get one of my pieces and what I do is I lay it underneath. The background color, I usually do a light, like a yellow, or white, or gold, or pink, just to create some value in the background. So I lay it down. Then you want to flood your image. And then you go ahead and pull it down. Throw a different color in. Flooded. And that's the starting process. Yeah, you can go to my website, you can see my work or my Instagram. Instagram is the best place, this is where I get the most recent work. I don't put any pricing on there, simple fact that I have a, an art representation in, in Chicago called David Leonardo's Gallery. He does very well by me. So I don't want to compete with his prices online. So there's Wisconsin prices and there's Chicago prices. Yeah. I do ask art fairs. Uh, weekend shows just because you like I had all this work and like you know I well, like what do I do with it how do I get it out there um, you can you know, there's only so many shows you can line up and so these art shows are a good avenue you know people have their feelings about them um, but yeah it's a good avenue to get out there and then you don't know who you who gonna come across it's really it's basically I've had a lot of good things happen because I was at an art fair and somebody came across my work and then contacted me down the line and was like, you know, would you like to be part of the show? When you, I go to show, I don't, you know, I, there's only one or two people like me out there. Uh, so like, you know, like graffiti art, street artists, you know, that type of stuff. It, you don't see that much around because they, you know, it's just, it, it, they don't get in those shows because they right. don't see it as art. Yeah. They probably don't see my stuff as art. Yeah. They just see it as something yeah. that's not art. Yeah. Which is fine, and I get that. But at the same time, when I get in the shows, I sell. So that tells me there's a market to people like my stuff. It'd be great if I could be there because it's an alternative.